I'm gonna be real with you. These past few days have been super, super frustrating. I've been in full creative block mode. Not on Hermitcraft. I've got loads of ideas of things that I want to do on Hermitcraft, but I really wanted to make a redstone video. I just fancied working on one, but I had no ideas of what to do with it. And that turned into a three day just frustration marathon. This is how things normally go when coming up with ideas for videos. So I'll have a bad idea and I'll just have, you know, tons upon tons of bad ideas and then eventually a good idea will come along and I'll work on that. But these past few days, they've been different. Instead of my usual system, I'll have a bunch of bad ideas. I'll have tons upon tons of them, but then eventually one of these little guys will come along. A bad idea that I think is good. These are absolutely without a doubt the worst sort of ideas because then you work on them, you start developing them, then halfway through recording the video on them, you realize that they're actually a terrible idea and you shouldn't have started. They're not so bad that they're good, like the famous pimple popper, they're just boringly bad. Like they're not even impressively bad or shockingly bad, they're just dull, forgettable, boring. And that's that has been my situation. Now, normally I don't talk about the creative struggles that come with making YouTube videos, but I thought it was worth sharing because a lot of people think that I'm some kind of infinite idea machine. And the reality is, is that I struggle with ideas just as much as everyone else. And even though I fully understand that these creative ruts happen to everyone, literally every person on the planet goes through these phases, I can't help but feel like a total failure when it's happening and I've spent three days looking at blank walls with absolutely nothing coming to my stupid brain. It makes me want to explode some cows. I mean, I do feel slightly better. Yeah, I feel much better. Let's work on a shop. Thanks to a lot of the really obscure farms that I've decided to create at the start of this Hermitcraft season, I've ended up with items that are actually sellable. We might be able to create a successful business here. And maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to turn around my reputation of being an incredibly unsuccessful businessman. Time to resource gather, which mainly just involves chopping down a whole bunch of trees, but don't worry, I am replanting them. See? See, I do do it, even if I don't show it on camera. So this right here should allow us to get at least a decent start on the build itself. You can see this is a very wood, and vegetation based build. I want it to look as eco-friendly as possible. I really want to make it feel as natural as possible as well. And to do that, I'm using a technique that I've seen on the Fresh Minecraft Builds Instagram. They constructed an eco house and it even says in the caption that it's the perfect house for vegan weirdos, which means it's perfect for me. I was really inspired by the use of interlocking log shapes to build up the structure. So I've taken that concept and I've given it my own spin. And you can probably see now how it's all beginning to come together. We get this, well, this this is not the best example. Everything's sort of blending into one another, but once you start getting all the details in, it starts to look really good, I promise. The only thing about a design like this is it uses absolutely tons of wood. I thought we had enough, but we definitely didn't. Look, okay, I, I know what you're thinking. This is horrendous at this point in time. I would agree with you. I would happily agree with you, but it is going to get better, I promise, I hope. I really, I really do hope. Does it look better from far away? No, no, it still looks awful. It, look, it looks absolutely terrible. I'm staying wary of you, buddy. Now that the grass platforms are going in, it's starting to look a tiny bit better. I mean, it, at least it's starting to look like a solid build now. It looks especially cool from above. This is looking pretty sweet. Now we need a tiny bit of fence post action. This has to have improved things, right? This has to have done the trick. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit. I might have to reduce the height of Wonderwall. It's kind of getting in the way here. We're definitely on the right track. I feel like we're on the right track. Bone meal. Bone meal's the way to go. Whenever you feel like something isn't working, just begin to spam with bone meal to your heart's content. Even if there's no grass, just throw bone meal at it. It's working. It is working. The next plan of action is to start chucking in lanterns. Lanterns is another big one. And then we have waterfalls as well. I think that massively helps with the flatness that we're currently struggling with, the lack of texture. Yes, this is starting to look lovely. This is starting to look really, really cool. Pathway making its way up to the front door. Now we're rolling out the real big guns. The bushes are coming in. The bushes are coming in. And I'm starting to really, really like what I see. I'm starting to really, really like the way that this has come together. There's still a bunch more details to add, but I have to... I have to know what this looks like and it is looking cool. It is looking cool. I've added some lanterns to the walls. We're losing the flatness. The flatness is going. If you look at all these builds behind me that were constructed by incredibly talented builders, you'll notice that none of them have flatness. There are no flat walls or uninteresting areas. All of them have got depth. They've got detail. And that is what we are trying to work towards. Right, I would say next up, 
We are going to need, yeah, some trapdoor action, as well as a bunch of other stuff. And now finally, I would say this thing's looking cool. It's looking very eco-friendly, it's looking incredibly natural, I'm very, very happy with this thing. Especially when you fly in, I just absolutely love the shape that this creates. I'm really quite proud of myself, I'm not gonna lie. And the name that I have opted for is Harmless harvests that is the name of my new shopping empire this is going to be huge okay we're going to be selling stuff that people actually want which i know is revolutionary for me but i think i think if we if we actually sell things that people want then we might be able to make some diamonds all we're missing right now is some big old banners that tell people exactly what the initials of this store are i i've never Oh gosh, I don't know how to use this. I have never used one of these. I know that's embarrassing, but I really haven't. Okay, this is actually way easier than I thought it was going to be. Banners used to be so much more complicated than this. Except I did just totally mess it up. However, finally, I managed to make it work. And that... That is... That's very pretty, isn't it? That really is the nice finishing touch. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with this little one. I'm really, really happy with how this has all come together. So now it's time to start getting everything inside. First plan of action is to clear everything out to make as much space as possible in this slightly odd shape. And now I need to work out what floor I'm actually going to go with. I was going to go stone slabs, but uh, I just I don't know. I decided to switch out for moss, and I think this is considerably better. This fits in with the vibe a lot more. But I do want to do something with the wall. I have no clue what though. Why are interiors so impossible? They are literally the hardest things to work on in Minecraft. I would rather do 10 ridiculously complicated redstone contraptions than one interior. Seriously. I've tried my best to sort of mimic what I did on the outside, on the inside, and that has definitely helped out. And I think once we start getting some chests in here with items inside, it will look tons better. So let's start getting some items in. Harmless Harvest is going to be selling a variety of things and the stock list is going to change throughout the season, but for now it's going to be Ender Pearls, Gunpowder, Ghast Tears, End Crystals, Obsidian, Potatoes, lots and lots of potatoes, Logs, Ender Chests, Blaze Rods, Blaze Powder, basically anything that I have a farm for or can harvest, I will be selling. And all of the chests are now all in place, obviously completely empty at this point in time, and I have to say, this is looking pretty cool. This is looking like a proper hermit craft shop. I haven't had a proper hermit craft shop in ages. So let's get it filled up with items. items successfully gathered. About 90% of these chests are filled up, or at least partially filled up, with everything that we need. All I've got to do is get to all of the prices worked out. One diamond for 16, one diamond for three stacks, one diamond for six stacks, one diamond for four, one diamond for nine stacks, one diamond for one, one diamond for eight, one diamond for one stack, two diamonds for one stack, one diamond for three stacks, one diamond for eight, and one diamond for 16. Now, obviously, these prices are 100% subject to change. I'm going to find things out as we go along. Some of these items will be way too expensive. Some of them will be way too cheap, and I'm sure everyone has their opinions down in the comment section. Don't worry, I will get all of the values worked out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 90% of the chests are currently filled in, but the ones that are empty are all of the ones that rely on blazes, and that means I have to do some AFK in, which is something that I'm very nervous for, because even though I have faith in the farm that I designed, I think I did a good job and I think it worked well, I am a total moron. Okay, I, that has to be taken into account. And th this is clearly evidenced by the fact that I forgot to hold my shield i forgot to hold down the right click button with my shield when using the farm this is the problem this is the problem oh all right I i'll see you in the morning i hope it goes well and it kind of did kind of did i only ended up going afk for around about four or five hours because when i came back to my computer i noticed that my wolf had taken a tiny bit of damage his tail was a tiny bit lower 
It was clearly only one hit, but that was enough for me not to want to run the farm AFK overnight, just in case something happened. Now, imagine this was just caused by a lag spike, and that just means I'm going to have to monitor this farm a little bit closely while I'm AFK at it, but even so, in four hours to get this much, and also this many levels, it's pretty impressive. And most importantly, my statistics have remained clear. I've never killed a magma cube, never killed a creeper, never killed a blaze. They've only killed me. So let's take our harmless harvests to the store. Well, this is cool. Clearly somebody flew off away from the end render and now I'm just picking up their XP. This is one way of getting lots of levels. All right, I'll be honest. This is getting a little bit boring now. I've repaired all my tools. I don't really need many more levels, but it feels rude to leave it. How long was someone here? How much XP is here? Who is responsible for this? What is- what? what? <laughs> this is ridiculous. I've legitimately been here for four minutes. How has this not despawned? How has this not despawned? Oh, oh, oh! There we go. <laughs> oh, that was weird. Anyway, Harmless Harvests is now fully stocked and open for business. Please do come in and buy whatever you want. Of course, that goes to the hermits and not not you guys who are watching. In fact, that's a call to action in a video that's going to be watched by about 2 million people that only applies to about 20 people. That's it's a little bit redundant, isn't it? I'll just message them on Discord. But I'm genuinely really pleased with this place. I think it sells useful stuff and this might just be my first successful business in many years on the Hermitcraft server. Forget oh dear. This one's gonna be an oh yeah. Let's start work on my base. It seems like it's that time in the season where people begin to leave their starter bases and start work on their actual bases. For example, Grian has got this incredibly innovative design of stone witch's hats and big red snakes on a stone floor. I mean, you know, I know that Green is a good builder. I'm not so sure on this base design at this point in time. I'll have to wait and see how this develops. Is he gonna add more of those red snakes? Honestly, I've... I don't know if that will get better if there's more of them. Now that I've stopped thinking of them as snakes and as strawberry laces, I'm actually starting to like it. You know, as Scar said, builds... Buildings have trends. You know, there are, there are building trends in the Minecraft community. Maybe we're moving into the strawberry lace era. Anyway, my plan for my base in this Hermitcraft season is to really lean into the idea of a utopia. I want to create a utopia. I want to create the perfect place. There's going to be nature everywhere. There's going to be animals, there's going to be no harm, no death. Okay, it's just it's going to be a beautiful place to live. And the location that I've earmarked is this area here, this rather enormous place. In fact, if I fly up, I should be able to show you the entire thing. I'm thinking that we cover basically all of this up to around about there. Kind of at diagonals to the bedrock service. Like this whole zone here. This is going to be my where my base is going to be going. Okay, so it's going to be quite a big, it's going to be quite a big base. I think actually I slightly overstated. I would say roughly in line with the harmless harvests. I would say in line with that, that's going to be the border of my base. Yeah, right about here. So this whole cove, this big spot here, this is going to be my base. Obviously, we're going to have green over here. And I'm hoping that I get another neighbor off in this area as well. And then all of our bases can be pretty close and kind of interconnected. Now, this all sounds brilliant. This all sounds fantastic. The only thing is I have got absolutely zero designs and zero ideas worked out for what my base is actually going to be. You know, I have this very loose picture in my head. You know, this incredibly loose picture, but there's really no detail and no things developed. So I'm going to be working on that over the next couple of weeks. But one thing's for sure, I am going to be pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. I'm going to be doing a decent chunk of terraforming. I'm going to be working with organic structures as opposed to my usual kind of geometric shape-based ones. So I'm I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm, re I'm really nervous for this, but I am excited for it. It should be fun. I, I think we can do something pretty special here. I really do. It all feels pretty real right now. It all feels pretty real. It all feels pretty real. Time to do some strawberry laces of my own. I really miss having my automatic concrete maker. I I, I really took that for granted. That dolphin's stolen my concrete. That dolphin is full on stealing my concrete. What are you doing? Okay, let's get this ball rolling then. So first off, I'm going to plan out the initial shape of like the main structure of my base. This is going to be the focal point. This is going to probably be the thing that you first notice when looking at it. And honestly, I have no idea if what I'm doing is correct at this point in time. I'm just kind of spamming blocks all over the place, hopefully formulating the shape that I actually want. Okay, I would say this is about 
Yeah, this is probably about as far out as I'm going to come, but don't worry, the actual base itself is going to spread probably right the way up to Teresa. Now, we're, we're really going to try and merge these two things together. So then we're going to come in a little bit. All right, that goes into around about here. Now, I guess I should work on this side as well so I can get this edge all worked out. Okay, I think I should probably start rounding this off around about now. Is it roughly level with the other side? Yes, I think so. I think that comes up to about here. Yep, here we go. And connected. Okay, so this, this right here is the rough outline of the main focal point of my base. It might look a little bit strange at this point in time. And to be frankly honest, it looks even stranger from above. I mean, this, this is not the sort of shape that you would probably expect my base to be taking, but I've got a little bit more planning out to do. You see those red strawby laces there? Those are essentially my plan for the outline of the main terraforming, the actual land mass itself. The base itself is going to be sitting inside that land mass, and that's going to be going in this sort of area. Now, as I say, this base is going to be quite organic, so the shapes are probably going to be a little bit strange looking, and maybe warp certain elements, maybe off center. I really want to try and get away from symmetry with this base here. But I think this little outline should give us a pretty good idea of how everything is going to be lining up, where every element is going to be sitting. Okay, all right, perfect. That looks, that is absolutely spot on. So we've got the land mass, that's going to be big. It is going to be tall. Is going to be it's going to be pretty impressive looking already and then the base this area here this i mean it's going to expand from this but this is going to be like the main focal point that's going to sit kind of intertwined with the land itself and kind of pop in and out and it's going to be interacting with it i think that's going to look really really quite impressive and not only that but this is only phase one of my mega base plans i have three phases to this plan all right so this it's going to be quite big. It's going to be quite an impressive project. I am both incredibly excited and also incredibly, incredibly nervous for it. I'm slightly terrified for it. Just one quick thing that I want to do is create a dot and dash border around the edge of where my base zone is going to be. Because as I say, this is the focal point. It is going to spread out and everything is going to be decorated around it as well. Think gardens, vegetation, animals, all sorts. Parrots. I really want to have parrots. All right, I've never really played with parrots too much. I want to have them. Bees, maybe? Potentially bees in boats? Well, could also happen. And... Cool. Okay, so that is the border. That is a rough idea of how much the base is going to be spreading into these areas. This is where all of the other buildings are going to go. Little bits and pieces. I now feel like I'm a man with a plan. I know what I'm doing. The idea in my head is becoming more and more solidified. I'm liking the look of this. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Plans have been officially established. Why am I incapable of getting into Pearl's base without getting stuck? Just, oh. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. I, I, I can't take this anymore. Pearl needs to be held responsible for what she's done. She has created the most challenging doors to navigate on the Hermitcraft server, and for that, there is only one punishment. A good old-fashioned standoff. Look at her. Even she can't use her own doors. Okay, fine. She used that very well, but still, Pearl, I am, Hello. I am angry. Okay, I am, I am, I'm really, I'm, what? I'm angry. Just stop doing that. All right, I'm, why? I'm, I'm why? trying. I'm why are you angry? Take it, take just, a guess. Just open, just, just open. Take the, a guess, just open Pearl. the one door. You just need to open this one. That's all you need. I'm trying. This is what <laughs> I've, this is what I've been trying to do. Do you see what this? This is, this is why I'm angry. It's, it's it's a very simple concept though. Like you just you just do this. You just walk through. Why why you struggle so much? Why? <laughs> don't, don't go through the look. That that's how Corrales does it. You know, and then Green does it. Green opens them all the way and then walks through the middle. I'm trying, pal. This <laughs> I don't is... think that's the way to do it either. <laughs> you you have the most frustrating doors on the Hermitcraft server. But all right, I've never had why to. Why are they frustrating though? Like it's such a simple concept. Look, even this guy's getting it mixed up. Look, he's all over the place. He doesn't know what's going just... on. He all just right. wants to poke his head out the door. He's upside down. I think he's got a very good excuse to be confused. <laughs> yeah, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. But okay, look, it, that it, this is it. we're gonna have to settle this. All right, we're gonna have to settle uh -huh. this the old-fashioned way. How? We are going the to have a, a, a standoff, a true old-fashioned standoff. So just with bows, right? 
if that's old not fashioned. With, not with bows, not with bows and crystals and crystal standoff. How and, is that old fashioned by and, any standard? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Okay, a new fashioned standoff. All right, with a eggs. New fashioned old standard. And 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 crystals and everything like that. This furnace here. This is going to be. This is the central point. I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm kind of making this up as we go along. All right, but all right. So this all is right. this is the central I'm point. Open. I'm gonna load it up with fuel. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's just gonna have. Let's say seven sticks. Seven sticks sounds good. So that's like the seven fuse. Seven sticks. Seven sticks furnace. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like that. Ten paces. So the ten yeah. from the furnace. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Okay, and then uh, God, this is actually I, we. I might miss. <laughs> I'm oh, starting geez. to realise I might actually miss. This is I actually listen. this is I actually listen. quite a lot better than I was expecting. <laughs> I'm dying, All right, so then we have to stand three blocks, three blocks away three blocks from away. this end crystal. The idea is is that mm -hmm. you stand empty-handed, and then right. when this furnace runs out of fuel, we're then cleared to switch to the eggs and shoot at each other's mm -hmm. end crystals. And then once you've fired your shot, you are then able to place down a piece of dirt at your feet to hopefully protect yourself from the explosion that is caused by the other person firing their egg. Does that make any sense? I feel like... Yeah, <laughs> that, it, it does, it does. Eggs. It's making me nervous. I'm, no, I'm so terrified. <laughs> now I understand how they felt in the uh, Wild West, sort of. I mean, it's similar stakes, you know? Okay, we ready? Yeah. All right, I'm organizing my inventory. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, okay. All right. Oh boy, all right. Fueling up. All right, okay. You've got it. Yep, all right. All right, one, <laughs> two, three. Cool. Okay, and then we have oh, to be gosh. we have to be eggless. <laughs> we, I, I'm eggless. I, I haven't... Uh, I don't actually know the range of the time I'm no, on the stick. Neither do I. This is... <laughs> neither do I. I'm, okay. I'm terrified. Oh, my gosh. Okay, come on, Furnace. <laughs> come on. Come on, Furnace. <laughs> oh no! This is tense. Ten sticks is way more than I thought. Already. It is. Oh, you. Okay, so it's the full ten. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yep. I feel sick. Maybe a little bit. I feel sick. Oh, my heart. My heart. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is too much for me to bear. <sighs> we might be here a little bit. Yeah, this is, ten it's sticks was maybe too much. <laughs> maybe a little bit. <laughs> it's the trial run, right? Is this the first time you've this done this? This is the this? first time. Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever done. Right, let's go. Let's go pick up your stuff. My death streak. My poor death streak. Oh man. I'm dying inside. <laughs> it's always so that funny. It's incredibly quick. Wow. So I think it's safe to say my first standoff was a huge success. And as the only undefeated gunslinger on the Hermitcraft server, I don't think that's going to be my last standoff either. Expect to see those a lot more often. But anyway, I think that just about wraps things up for today. We have built up a shop. We've worked out plans for the base and also come up with a new goofy idea. I would say that that's a well-balanced episode. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. And it's at this point in the video that I want to point out that the defenses that I came up with for use in my standoff game, uh, they wouldn't have actually worked. We still would have died if you had defended yourself. But if you stand four blocks away from the end crystal, then place down the defenses, that it would work. So those are the slightly amended rules there that make it a little bit more fair for next time. But they still wouldn't have saved Pearl. She was gone.